good day, afternoon, morning, evening, morning, whatever. Uh, uh, let's introduce ourselves first. My name is uh, Carl Lobing. I'm uh, the technical lead of the Dutch Tax and Customs Administration Security Operations Center for, uh, I think, about 15 years. And um, this talk I'm going to do together with my uh, colleague Arnold Hulzel. He is one of our security analysts and is in the IT business for 15 years. So, yeah, something about that. Like and it's for him, it's more about out of control hobby, terabytes of data he loves, logging, and yeah, yeah. Okay. reading RFCs. And reading RFCs, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and find the hidden treasure. Um, our talk is divided in three sections. Um, first, we present a real life fishing example. Unfortunately, it's in Dutch, but I will uh, go, go through that. And the number of SKU email standards. And finally, we present an implementation uh, based on those technology we have created in Splunk. And finally, we also want your help. Uh, this, the implementation we've done, uh, you can do that also in the Elk stack and other tooling you have, uh, which can process the logs. Uh, so don't worry, you don't have to spend millions of dollars to implement the techniques we will produce during this talk. And at the end, uh, yeah, some future plans we develop and uh, we'll let you know and ask you input too, please. So um, why do you, we think uh, fighting and combating fishing is so important? Uh, first of all, the damage caused by, to the taxpayers and our businesses, both of them affected in their pockets and emotional well-being by confronting uh, fishing. I presume everybody has received uh, some fishing and the fishing in the past was uh, Fully translated in Dutch, and now uh, yeah, Google Translate does a great thing, and they have also translation bureaus to translate the English into Dutch. And we try to build a strong relationship between the taxpayers based on trust. So we think a good relationship will help us to collect taxes in an improved way. It's very crucial to detect uh, phishing campaigns as soon as possible because uh, the the Perpetrators are only interested in your uh, and my credentials and eventually your and my money. And what we see is that in the first hour, most people are clicking on links and then it will fade out. And the main objective of our research was try to find a way to detect those phishing campaigns as soon as possible. So, so and then I have the ability to break the money circle also quickly as possible. Um, now, this is a real life fishing example. Uh, yeah, I told you unfortunately it's in touch, but uh, in this fishing example, the recipient received a mail stating that he has to pay a tax installment of 83 euros. But look at the domain which is used in uh, this uh, email, uh, in the email address, which is belastingdeans.nl, which is our domain. So they're using our domain to send uh, phishing uh, emails. Uh, if we had the, implemented the standard we produce, we uh, we presenting in this talk at a specific time, we had detected the phishing campaign instantly. And if both parties had implemented these standards, the email would have not be sent to the recipient. And we will show you also the technique to get some insights who is sending those emails on behalf of you. Uh, but before we have to continue, uh, we have to uh, three different starting points to consider. First of all, there should be no impact on the business. It's not allowed to lose legitimate emails. Uh, secondly, only standard may be used. So don't invent your own standards, uh, but use the standard description re request for comments, or RFCs. And finally, uh, we will uh, in, we present this talk only with prevent the phishing and the implementation is done at the sender and recipient side. The standards we're discussing to show today are shown on the slides. 
and we're going to review the, uh, these existing security mechanisms so we're on the same page to, to understand what we did. And let's start first with the start TLS. Uh, start TLS is a method to upgrading a plain text a communication uh, uh, channel up to a secure communication channel based on encryption. And uh, this can be used to secure an unencrypted SMTP connection to a, uh, a secure encrypted SMTP connection. But there is a real serious issue with Star TLS because it's vulnerable to man in the middle attacks. And you can uh, mitigate that by using Dane for SMTP or MTA STS, both standards we will present during this talk. Let's turn our attention to, uh, you can find the RFC, by the way, in this in the sheet if you, as Arnold likes reading RFCs. Yep. We also have a nice overview of everything discussed at all the RFCs in the yeah. one of the last slides. Yeah. So, and of course, the slides will be made available to you. And uh, so you can click on, click on links. So, uh, no. No, no. no, type it over. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then you can see that as an alternative to PKA, uh, PKA certificate authorities, it's built on DNSSEC. So no DNSSEC means no day. And um, which can, uh, you can then verify whether a TLS collection is, uh, is uh, secure. So it's made the TLS connection less vulnerable for man in the middle attacks. In the case of SMTP, the authoritative mail server for a domain are stored at MX records, as you probably know. Uh, the X509 certificate of the mail server is also stored in the DNS zone file and as TLS A records. By comparing the certificate of during the start TLS uh, connection and the one stored in the DNS zone file, you can uh, verify when you're talking to the real mail server and not some man in the middle uh, guy who's uh, created their, his own mail server. And Dane for SMTP, which is an extension on Dane, can solve the problem for SMTP. Uh, because of DNSSEC, you can create your own X509 certificates, so you don't have to buy an uh, expensive uh, certificate or use um, uh, um, Let's Encrypt for that. Uh, this is an example of how. Uh, ooh, go back. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, this is an example of uh, SMTP uh, MTA uh, STS, which is the mail uh, transfer strict transport security, which is uh, equivalent of a DANE for uh, securing your uh, start TLS connection. This is uh, built on a, a, a policy which you have to create on your web server. Uh, it's a fairly new standard. It's uh, uh, published in September 2018. Um, the difference between Dane and MTA STS is that uh, you don't need a, a full DNSSEC implementation. Uh, Together with that comes uh, SMTP TLS reporting, which will give you a reporting option of uh, your TLS connections, uh, if they're trusted, if they're found a, uh, a uh, service certificate, which is, uh, is rogue. Uh, and the difference between um, MTA, STS and Dane is that you need a valid X509 certificate. So a uh, let's look up certificate of a, uh, from some other uh, CA. Uh, in this example, you can see this is our uh, uh, MTA SDS uh, policy file, which is uh, can be downloaded from this site. It has to be in a dot well known directory, and the file name is either MTA SDS.txt or MTA SDS.json. And this file we have a txt file, uh, we have it in mode testing, and you can put your MX records in there or additional MX records and you the eight max H file, which is the TTL of the, your policy file. So if you uh, receive then a MTS report, it looks like this. Um, this one comes from uh, Google. 
and it says that uh, it gets the, the policy back and the total successful counts uh, if in this case everything is okay. But the bad, for instance, if you have a man in the middle uh, uh, guy, then you will see uh, the sending and the receiving uh, MTAs, which are not yours, and, uh, and the fail count is the one because Google failed to set up a SNTP TLS SNTP connection with your mail server because it's the MTS and uh, STS policy is not correct. Another standard we uh, implemented is uh, SPS and the policy framework, probably a known uh, uh, all by you. Um, I put some uh, a, a figure in it how it works. Um, Somebody sends a tries to send a an email to uh, to a recipient, um, compose the email and send it to a mail server. The mail server sends it to mail server B. What it does, it checks the SPF record and uh, in the um, uh, DNS uh, server whether that's correct. Um, if correct, then uh, you can add also DKIM signatures, uh, DKIM check, and finally a DMARC, which will come uh, later. And then if everything is okay, then the, the mail will be delivered to the recipient. If not, it will be end up here in your uh, uh, spam box. But what we did also is uh, we added some, uh, we looked in Arnold did. Arnold looked in the appendix of the SPF and found an option to add uh, macros with your SPF record. And then it makes it a very uh, interesting protocol because then you can see who is sending email on behalf of you. Um, so uh, that's, you can find the macro definitions in uh, paragraph 7.2 of, uh, of the SPF uh, RFC. And what you can see is also we, uh, uh, Greg from spf.all.com uh, uh, did some uh, research and found out that from the 140 million domains he has visited, only 2.6 million has implemented SPF. So a lot of work to do. And from those 2.6, there's only 13,000 domains implemented macros. And macros are very, very powerful which we can show you later. Um, so a lot of work to do. So what are these macros look like? If you put this in your, uh, in your those macros used in your DNS file, or DNS zone file, you can get the complete sender email address, the helo string of the email server. So the identification of email server, the local part, domain part and also the IP address of the sending mail service. So you get insights who is sending email on behalf of you. And that will end up in your uh, DNS log files. So DNS logs are key, are very important. Don't outsource them because it's are very, very uh, uh, valuable. And the RFC is quite old. It's from March 2016. It's for RC software, okay, but the implementation rate is very low, and, and the one thing is, uh, is 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 a problem that if you use uh, the um, uh, percent L, then uh, can contain valid email addresses, and those valid email addresses will end up also in log files. There is a RFC which is 17, 7816, which is about DNS the, uh, query domain uh, name minimization of resolver logs. Uh, that will avoid that, uh, but also the implementation rate is quite low. So that's that's uh, that's a pity. Um, so how can we detect those fishes when they're not in our infrastructure? And Everything happens on the internet, but not on our servers. That's uh, the SPF macros come in. And here you can see the implementation we have done, uh, which is uh, in a redirect record to uh, underscore SPF.palassingdienst.nl. Uh, the tag is SPF1 and the uh, in the uh, uh, resource records, you can see 
we're requesting the, the, the IP address, the HELO string, I have over the hill already. The, the domain part. Oh, the, the domain part email. of the of the sending uh, sending email, uh, and uh, you can check that if it. And the the, the other two lines are our uh, mail service, which can be checked then. Uh, how it works, so you I show you uh, later. So in this picture, you can see um, how the, uh, the DNS queries uh, will, will uh, work. Uh, somebody sends an email at uh, sock at belastingbeans.nl um, from mail server A to mail server B. Uh, there will be done a SPF lookup for uh, belastingbeans.nl. What the domain server will send back is the uh, a, um, a text record resource record with uh, SPF1 with a redirect to uh, the, the actual uh, SPF record. And again, there will be done a lookup for underscore SPF.belastingbeans.nl. And what will come back is the macro file. What the, the uh, what will happen is the, the email server will put the IP, his IP address, his helo string, and the sender part of the domain into the DNS request. Uh, the receiving uh, DNS server, uh, which is the authoritative name mail server, a DNS server will answer that. And if you can go back in the, the other slide, you can see a matching resource record for this query. So what you this will send back is an IP address, which means SPF pass. So this is an email server, which is authorized to send email on behalf of our domain. Just a minor note here. We have yep. put in here uh, one two seven zero zero one. Um, we found out, well, not that long ago, that that not always works. So if you put in there any other IP address other than localhost or an RFC uh, nineteen eighteen address, it will work. Just put in your uh, IP address of your mail server there. And also, if you have an IPv six. Uh, resource record, put an IPv4 uh, IP address in that. In your uh, macro response, yeah. yeah. It always needs to be an IPv4. Yes. So this is the bad uh, situation. Somebody, a perpetrator sends email on behalf of you. So the whole uh, uh, screen goes on, uh, SPF lookup, redirect, etc., etc., And then uh, what will happen is that the recipient uh, sends back the IP address of the perpetrator, meaning that's not an IP address which is in one of the IP addresses uh, uh, which is in the resource records. So what the DNS server of uh, our DNS server will do, the authority DNS server will send uh, back an annex domain because that specific uh, resource doesn't exist. Meaning now you have in your log files the IP address of the perpetrator the hero string of the perpetrator and the sender part of the uh, which is actually then belastingdeans.nl so you can get more insights of who is sending email on behalf of you um, and those dns queries and responses are actually stored in your uh, uh, dns logs which you can ingest in your log management or sim tooling uh, like we did so you get more insight who is sending email on behalf of you uh, the next time that uh, we will present is uh, Domain Key Identified Mail, DKIM. Um, DKIM is a method of detecting forged uh, sender email addresses in email. Actually, it's, uh, it signs the body and selected part of the SNP headers, depending on what you want to be uh, uh, signed. That's up to you. And the digital signature is transmitted in, in the header of the email. And you can use namespaces, which is actually handy if you uh, outsource parts of your uh, email uh, environment, for instance, marketing email or whatever. And um, the sender must use the secret key of the DKIM pair, and the public key will be in your uh, DNS uh, as a text resource record, which can then be used by the receiving mail server to check whether the signature is correct of the mail sent by the uh, real mail server. Um, DMARC is uh, actually kind of the clue between uh, 
uh, SPF and uh, DKIM. And um, so in your D DMARC record, you can put the, uh, the actually verdict if, if uh, both are failing, what you should do. Should you uh, put then uh, the email into the spam folder? Or should you uh, quarantine it or reject it or pass it? It's up to you. It's also depending on the policy you have uh, configured. Uh, to, sum to summarize, um, yeah, implementing this standard gives you more uh, detection and preventing, uh, prevention capabilities. Uh, we have done it. We have about 550 domains, and it took about a month to implement. You have to do it in production because. Well, that's not production keeps you short. Okay. So, and if you want, and also the both the sender and the recipient should be implemented. And that's why we're giving these talks uh, because we think it's important that everybody implement this because then the number of uh, phishing and mails will be reduced significantly. Uh, also in the Netherlands, the Dutch uh, government, uh, governmental organization must comply to the uh, Dutch standardization platform to uh, comply or explain this. And there, DKIM, uh, uh, Star TLS, SPF, etc., also in there. Uh, SGDN, which is the uh, Dutch uh, domain registry, give a, a financial incentive of 3.3 uh, uh, euro 40 per year per domain if you implement it. Oh, sorry, uh, less. Uh, the, its total is uh, 3 uh, euro 40 per year for a domain, and you get four cents uh, discount. But if you uh, for start TLS and DMARC give you 16 cents discount, and if you have a, a lot of domains, then it could be end up uh, quite a few beers in a bar in Las Vegas where we're not allowed to go to. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, this concludes my part of the, the talk, and thank you for your attention so far. And uh, Arnold, uh, the floor is yours. Yes. Let me. Yeah, sorry. Okay. How to implement this? Because those are all nice standards, but yeah, you have to um, do something with it, and then uh, do something uh, with uh, with all the information. Um, like Carl said, we have implemented just about everything and um, well we're doing it for the greater good of things so we want to share it uh, for free uh, and yeah hope that everybody implements it um, so like Carl said these inf all these different standards uh, will give us a, a lot of information um, you have DMARC which gives you more insight in what's happening on the receiving side with your email so are those emails uh, just processed, or are they uh, rejected, or are they put in quarantine? Uh, and with the uh, advanced SPF micro, we have a um, more insight into where is the email coming from? Is it actually coming from our infrastructure, or uh, is it coming from somewhere else? Um, but that's just data until you do something with it and create information out of it. So, um, what I've done, uh, like Carl said, I created a Splunk app because, well, yeah, we have Splunk and we don't want to use another tool. Um, but if you have uh, anything else that can process log files, um, um, just use that. Uh, if you want to do it in, uh, I don't know, Excel, do it in Excel. Um, I created the Splunk app and it's uh, one of the things that it does is it processes the DMARC uh, uh, reports. Um, those reports are sent to a email address, either as a XML or an XML GZ file, in theory. Um, so I created a couple of Python scripts that can uh, access the mailbox and uh, pass out the, uh, uh, download all the, the reports, uh, process the uh, XML files and uh, do some uh, error uh, handling with them and then um, put it in a log file either as a key is value pair or a JSON uh, file so that you can, well, then after that process it with whatever tool you like uh, to in ingest it in your log management uh, environment or your scene. 
Um, what you need to have is obviously a DMARC record in your DNS uh, zone file. You need to have network access to the mailbox, either via Poptree or, or IMAP. And of course, the user the password for the uh, mailbox. Um, you put those in and, um, well, it will create the JSON files and then you can ingest it. Um, created a couple of uh, dashboards on that. Uh, this dashboard will, in general, show you um, how things are going. So especially in the beginning when you're implementing it, um, this is a dashboard that can give you a lot of insight into how is my email handled by the receiving parties? Are there any errors? Do I need to change some things? On the first row, you will see um, the policies that you published. So uh, uh, our DMARC record is, is reject now. Um, please start with a non-policy. And uh, non-policy means just process the email, don't reject it, don't put it in quarantine, just do whatever you think that is necessary. Um, if you do that in the beginning, you can get already information about what's happening, and then you can adjust um, either your mail environment or your policy if everything um, goes well or, or not. Um, you can select what you want to group by. Uh, in this case, it is grouped by what was done with the emails, uh, were they delivered or were they rejected. Um, you see some counts and, and the uh, adoption rate of your alignment. Uh, how are your emails aligned? Um, in the bottom, you see more details. So where were the mails coming from? What was the IP address that the mail was coming from? Um, how many messages were there? The first screen column is the uh, DKIM alignment, sorry. Uh, alignment um, relates to is the email coming from a subdomain or from a uh, top level domain, um, or, or from your domain, not from a top level domain, but from your domain or from a subdomain. And was it also sent by that domain? You have two uh, policies that you can choose. You can either choose relax which means that email may come from a subdomain or you can use strict, which means that the um, part after the app needs to be the same as the um, domain that is coming, that is sending the email. Um, also your SPF alignment goes for the same. And the last two green columns are the action that was taken on the email and whether or not that was correct confirmed policy that you um, stated in your, your record. Uh, here you see that everything is, is green, everything is okay, that's what you want to see. Um, what we also see sometimes is that everything is green, so everything is aligned, the, the results are passed as for SPF and for DKIM, and still the mail is rejected. Um, there are probably some people that don't want email from the tax office. Don't know why, but yeah, it happens. Um, anyway, this gives you a great insight into um, what's going on, especially in the beginning when you're when you're working on the implementation. Um, yeah, it can give you a lot of insights without having to go into detail of every single uh, uh, Google report. Um, I've also done some uh, SPF dashboarding um, with it. Uh, for that, you need, um, of course, the uh, well, the SPF record that well we showed here, um, or something like that with the macros to get more insight into where is email coming from. Um, you need your DNS, your DNS uh, query logging enabled, and ingest that in your log management system um, so that you can. Um, get more information from that. Also very important is know what the good queries are. So fill out those macros for your um, mail servers. Well, obviously you need to put those in your, your DNS server. So know what the good queries are so you can rule them out and see what the bad queries are. Um, there's some dashboarding. This is everything. Uh, everything going fine. This is what we what we like to see. Um, you see the IP address of the sending mail server, the helo, um, the from part, the, the the domain part of the email address, and um, whether that server is 
one of the servers that we stared in our uh, SPF record and uh, what the DNS response was. Um, well, this is what we like to see. Um, but what we also saw, especially in the beginning, um, was this. This are these are our mail servers. Um, problem here is in the Halo stream. Mostly, this is because um, there's a bad implementation of SPF. Um, old mail systems. Uh, what we saw were uh, a lot of ISPs that provide free email. Oh, you do hosting here. Okay, yeah, here's an email server. Do whatever you like with it. Um, and they fill out the halo wrong. They fill in unknown or local host or whatever, their own uh, um, DNS name. Um, in the beginning, we got some complaints about our SPF record and that it wasn't okay, that it wasn't correct. And well, we showed them what the problem was and the problem was on their side. Um, and they could fix it and everything was fine. Yeah, and then we have put a guideline on our website yep. uh, how you should configure those email servers. Yeah, so what we're doing with the reference to the RFC and uh, everything we do is completely legal and it's not some uh, hocus pocus. Um, so yeah, but that gave us some problems in the beginning. Uh, what we also saw at the very beginning is this. Um, what this is, the domain that is being used, lobbanlob.info, is actually a domain from the Dutch tax office. It is a domain that was used once for some campaign and is now part. Uh, we all always keep our domains, um, so it's just part. What you see here in the beginning are IP addresses that are not from us. I looked up a couple of those IP addresses. Those are mostly uh, routers. So micro tick routers, um, look them up in Shodan and well, yeah, it's not that good. The helo that you see here is a fake one. The yandex.net is a legitimate uh, mail provider from Russia, but the forward number o.mail.yandex.net uh, doesn't exist. Uh, we looked them up at the time of these um, queries and they don't exist. So it's just nothing. Um, also the from email domain, well, those are non-existing domains. Um, uh, so this is happening not on our mail servers. It's not our mail servers that send this. If you look on the other side, the querying IP is the, EPA, is the IP of the, um, well, the DNS server that the mail server is using. Those are also not our mail, our servers. Those are owned by mail.ru, the other Russian big mail provider. Um, so this is happening entirely without, uh, out of our scope. We're not the sender, we're not the receiver, yet we do see that this is happening because of the advanced SPF uh, records that we have. If we wouldn't have those, we would never seen this. Um, what we can do with this information is um, warn our, our public, uh, put it on social media. If you see these numbers rising very rapidly, so you see a lot of DNS requests for those fake um, uh, mail servers, <clears throat> we can put a warning out on, on, on Twitter, on Facebook, or whatnot um, to warn our customers um, that there is a phishing mail campaign uh, going on. and well, that if they receive something, which isn't likely, but if they receive something, that they should ignore it. Uh, also, if you want to go to the, to the police, um, you have information now that you can provide them with um, so that they can do their investigations. Um, there's more in the, in the, in the app. It's, uh, it has a couple of Python scripts, first of all, first of all to um, process the reporting, but also to uh, get your own uh, SPF records and um, put them in a lookup so that you can use them within the dashboards. There is some more information about the uh, RFCs. Um, I was reading through the RFCs and yeah, you read them, you work on it. How was it again? Rereading it. 
again, working on it, rereading it. Uh, so I thought, I thought, well, I make a dashboard of it um, so that everybody can um, use the summary, uh, the highlights uh, of, of, of the RFC. Um, some dashboarding about the number of queries per record type. Um, there is a DNS help, uh, more of a, a, a wizard, and some help with the advanced SPF uh, records. Um, this is the uh, DNS record help wizard. It has some information about the dashboard on what's used and, and how to use it. And um, well, you can just fill out the forms, uh, fill out the, the fields, and then it will, it will um, give you the records that you need. Um, so here I fill so it one out. remark. If you oh. use the, the rough mail, email address, be aware of more probably privacy issues because yep. there are mail headers inside which could not be yours. Yep. And there could also be privacy related information on it. So be aware of using rough. Yep. That's uh, one of the things. Yeah. Um, so if we take the um, previously abused uh, domain, the lovemanlab.info, and we fill out, out fill out the fields here. We want a reject policy, and we want to, to send the Rua mails to Rua at blastenews.nl. Um, that's one important thing because that requires an additional record. Uh, I will show you later. And um, we want an SPF record. We want to redirect to our default uh, SPF record and deny all other systems. Um, that will provide this. Um, with four, just four DNS records, that domain is locked down. Um, first off, you need a wildcard record um, for your domain. And that's because uh, SPF doesn't inherit the policy of the main domain. So for every single existing or non-existing domain, you need a SPF policy. Uh, that was one of the problems that we saw previously with this domain. They, those emails were sent from a non-existing uh, domain. With a wildcard record and just uh, uh, minus all, you lock it down. So every time there is a DNS query for whatever subdomain, there is a response. Um, and yeah, if, if uh, mail environments are just relying on uh, SPF, if there is no answer for a um, SPF record for the record query, for the text record, it is assumed that you don't want to use SPF. So that's why this one is important. Um, there is the DMARC policy, that's the second uh, line. Uh, the third line is the actual SPF policy that says, uh, well, uh, redirect to S underscore SPF dot So it's mainly saying, look over there. And the last one is for the DMARC um, mails. It's quite a long one, um, but you need that. Um, otherwise, you don't get any emails, uh, uh, DMARC related emails. Um, that's done on purpose to prevent a denial of service attack. Otherwise, you could just register a domain, uh, put a DMARC record uh, on over there uh, that says uh, send out all the uh, RUBA and RUF emails to another domain, send out a lot of phishing mails, and then the, well, the legitimate domain gets bombarded with uh, DMARC uh, reports, uh, and they can be quite big, so you're creating a denial of service that way. Um, that last one is most of the time forgotten. And people think, well, I don't receive any uh, DMARC rep, uh, reports, so everything is fine. But it's not fine, probably. You just don't have the correct policy set up. Um, for our main domain, we needed a couple of more um, records. But that was because, yeah, we actually are using those domains. So we need to create the legitimate um, lookups that that were done um here we have uh, 14 records it's actually 15 because we also need the underscore spf .nl with the actual uh, policy uh, the benefit of this wizard is that you can just create a list of 
um, records that need to be created and give those to the uh, DNS um, administrators and ask them to just create those. It's more easy than that you ask, ask them, uh, please create a valid uh, SPF record for me, uh, because they probably don't know what to create. Also, as you can see in the last column, it's a note as to why that record is needed and a reference to the RFC and the uh, section that is uh, stated there so that you can have a look over there if you want more uh, info. Lessons learned from this. Um, the most important thing is know your email environment. Um, there is a good chance that if you are sending out newsletters or whatnot that marketing or communication departments um, are using um, something like MailChimp or, or whatever. If you don't know that and you do not create the appropriate policies for that, those mails will fail. So you cannot reach your audience. Um, Monitor your mail server logs if something fails. And one advice is if you use uh, those uh, 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 mail companies, third party providers, so, yeah, give them a subdomain yeah. of your uh, uh, main domain. Yeah. And don't use your main domain because then you can create a very granular policy for that specific uh, mail environment. You can give them a, a own DKIM key yeah. um, that will only be valid for that subdomain. Yep. So if something happens, uh, they get compromised or whatever, you can just pull that DKIM key, create a new one, and you only have one uh, party that is uh, involved in it. Um, test it. Test your SPF policies and your DMARC policies. Test it first on domains that you have that you know that don't send out email. So you can see what's happening, if it is working or not. Um, it needs to be done in production because yeah on production domains you send email but yeah like we stated before testing on production keeps you sharp keeps you sharp um don't forget an spf record for your wildcard domains for for your subdomains so use a wildcard domain um and um yeah have a look on my github everything is there um download it uh, use it abuse it enhance it um if you have questions, go over there. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, well, the main one is that you can get info on things that are happening outside of your um, span of control. So if mail is sent um, from servers that are not your own to um, servers that are not your own, but the domain is yours, you can get info uh, on it. Um, keep in close contact with your uh, MTA administrators and your uh, network administrators, with your DNS administrators, because they need to know if they, if, if they change something, I don't know, uh, put in an additional mail server, it has consequences. You need to create additional DNS records. And if you keep them close, well, they know and they will inform you and things will go out. Uh, go working um, please use the standards the rfcs and obey to them uh, don't be that one specific redmond based party that doesn't send out dmark records um, that doesn't send out the dmark reports because they are important um, to people they want to know what's happening with them um, so yeah that Future plans. Yeah. Should I do that? Yeah. Okay. So future plans. Um, we presented this uh, these standards and the implementation we have done, and uh, we had a discussion with uh, Craig, which is from SPFall.com. He created that website, which he did an initial initial scan on the internet if uh, SPF with macros are used but it's not uh, maintained anymore so uh, we decided to create our own uh, site uh, which we try to get uh, updated uh, the basis has been done um, 
we, we create the scripts and tools to retrieve uh, data which we presented in this presentation in this talk. Uh, among tools, we use uh, tools like Slurm, which is a high performance computing platform for job management, uh, ClusterFS to create a, a cluster file system, and by Splunk. Uh, by using Splunk. At the moment, we have uh, indexed uh, more than 352 million uh, domains. I think it's actually now a bit of 360 million, probably. probably. Uh, we are starting creating dashboards with all the data we have retrieved and want to publish it. But we need your help. Uh, which kind of information you will see, uh, which kind of dashboard we, we should create. We have a lot of data. We have data about uh, SPF. We have data about DNSSEC, uh, DKIM, uh, DMARC. We start using also, which is not part of the presentation yet, uh, with uh, scraping uh, BIMI data. BIMI is a new uh, standard. If you send an email to somebody uh, who has a BIMI capable uh, uh, mail client, then you will see in front of your email address the logo of the, the organization, actually what's behind the domain part. Uh, and then you can more uh, uh, you can be more sure that the, the, the mail is coming from uh, the original recipient where it should be sent from. So um, at the moment, uh, the scripting we've built is doing about 1,000 DNS queries per second yep. with three systems, so 3,000 DNS, DNS, uh, DNS queries per second, thanks to Cloudflare. Thank you, Cloudflare. <laughs> You're allowed to do that. And um, eventually, it will be uh, published on www.rfcanalyzer.net. Planning is the end of this year. Yeah. And we have a lot of domain sources already, but we need also more domains. And actually, the CCTLDs uh, are a bit, a bit problem problematic. So the .nls, .b, .de, etc., because they didn't open their zone files. So if somebody has hints, uh, the hints are wel welcome. At the moment, we're using uh, zone files .io, who is data the certificate, the transparency log, and some other uh, smaller uh, you know, sources. So if somebody has hints, please let us know. And if you want to work with us on making this available, please let us know, contact us, yeah. because we open uh, always, help is always welcome. And then the resource overview, um, the GitHub, all the RFCs that were discussed with a reference to, well, if you also want to read them like I did, um, and a DMARC adoption report, which is also quite interesting. It's from 2018, but yeah, it is uh, very interesting. And yeah, well, questions, uh, we will gladly receive them. Yeah. Um, thanks for listening. And have fun at DEFCON. And hopefully, we'll see you in real life next year. If we are Europeans yeah. allowed to go into the States. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs>